It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the world, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Donald Trump wins the New Hampshire primary uh, up right now with 91% of the vote in by about 11 and a half. Yeah. Uh, interesting because you and I went over the numbers yesterday. The polling, the uh, last minute polling, uh, four different polls that were uh, done, uh, just having Trump and Haley in there. Yeah. And uh, let me just make sure I get to it here. Where is it here? Okay, here we go. Uh, and this is just Trump and Haley. Trump up 27. Mm-hmm. That was insider advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Washington Post Monmouth poll, Trump up 18 points. Uh, the Trafalgar, 22 points. And then the final uh, poll that was done yesterday, Boston Globe, uh, Suffolk, 22 points. He'll probably win by around 11 is what they're looking at right now. So the polls were way off mm. in the actual numbers. And so you look at it and you say, okay, yeah, but that's because more independents came out to vote for Nikki Haley. It, it, that may be one of, I don't know if that's the truth or not. That might be the reason that people that gave because 70% of the people, the polling showed, um, the exit polling showed 70% of the people that voted for Nikki Haley were independents. Right. Okay, so you look at it and you go, okay, so Trump uh, locks up still. He's going to, you know, you look at South Carolina, which is really the next one. That's what, three weeks away, four weeks away? Yeah. Uh, uh, South Carolina. Uh, the 24th? Yeah, okay. Yeah. month from now. Uh, and and so you, you look at, you know, that really being significant. She's down 30. But the question being asked, and I, I want to play this audio last night, and this comes from uh, Fox News. And this was when they were all discussing. This was early on when only 25% of the vote was in. Mm. And Trump was only up by like seven and a half points over Nikki Haley. Now yeah. it grew yeah. overnight and they were going, whoa, you know, the polling was the polling was way off in this. You know, what does this show and what are some of the indicators? Now, you and I, just so people don't think that this is. I we get this a lot where we'll read what somebody else is saying. How did you guys say that? We're not saying it. We're saying what they said. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in this election. I don't know. There are too many variables. Yeah. There are too many things that we don't see in any election in modern history that are coming to the forefront now. Right. We and so I, I have no idea what's going going to happen. Can Trump can Trump win? Absolutely. Can Trump lose? Absolutely. Uh. I thought this was an interesting look at it, and I say I agree with this based on the Eric Harley principle of how you run an election. Yeah. And that's you always run an election as if you're 20 points down. Yep. No matter what you are, you always run it as if you're 20 points down. There should always be a sense, not panic where where you would you panic – but a sense of urgency in the campaign to just be um, totally over the top in promoting what your message is, never giving up, never taking anything for granted. Right. And so this came, uh, they were having the discussion, panel discussion, and uh, Fox News contributor Guy Benson had this to say about some of his concerns about the numbers out there for Trump. I think that the Trump campaign, the Republican Party, has to grapple with this reality that there are a lot of Republican voters who are not excited right now about about nominating Donald Trump again. More of them are, but there's a substantial minority who are not. Those people are going to have to come into the fold at some point if the Republicans are going to win a general election. And I've seen a lot of people sort of dismissive of all these independents boosting Haley's numbers here. Well, guess who the Republicans are going to need in the fall to win those independents. So I think just sort of giving the back of the hand to that coalition is unwise. And I think Republicans need to look at these numbers carefully. Hmm. Uh, And I, I, and based on the Eric Harley philosophy of how you run an election, I would agree with that. Yeah. 
Uh, and when I look at where the Trump campaign is now, and I don't know how they do it. I don't know. How does Trump reach out to independents? Huh. I mean, that's the question. The Trump campaign certainly is not now reaching out to independents. They're just not in their campaign style. No. It's not. I mean, now, maybe independents may come aboard because of the because the border is the number one concern of everybody across the board and inflation and just the insanity going on in in, in every aspect, you know, of of this country right now, which is being created by the administration. That's the thing we've talked about today, mm -hmm. which is why we said, in fact, if you want to reach out to independents, then some of the messaging you should do is you should explain to the American public that it's not that the Republicans can't solve the problems. It's the fact they cre cre created the problems. And that should, you think about it, Eric. Yeah, the Democrats created it. You said what Republicans, but oh. they've created their own problems. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm sorry. That the, Demo the Democrats have actually created the problems that yeah. we've seen today. Right. That it's not that they don't have the ability to, you know, it's not that I'm, I'm debating the, the point that they don't have the ability to solve these problems, you know, that these are organic problems that just naturally come in any society. You must have these. No, it's that they're they can't solve the problems because they're creating the problems and don't wish to solve them. Yeah, this and, is by design. This is their goal. Right. to and, get to this point. And and I think that need, that would be a major part of of any campaign. I don't see the Republicans promoting that at, at all. No. Not like we promote it on the air cuz it's so crystal clear as to what they're doing. They may change and they may do that. But it is a concern for me that Trump does not have the ability to pull in independence. No, it That's should a be a huge concern. concern and you know, we we talked about okay, uh, you know, what happened in, in Iowa, but also look at what happened, at least according to the exit polls, in New Hampshire. Now, I don't have anything that shows you can extrapolate this out, but you need to campaign as if you could. And that is 70% of her supporters were independents over you. Those independents chose her and we'd have to look at the exit polling how many independents went for for trump and then compare it and break it down but you need to apply that as if you got almost no independence and you're going to have to find a way to appeal to them i have that across number. the board i have the number you do uh, it was 70 percent of nikki haley votes were from basically uh the unaffiliated and independence okay. broke 60 40 for haley Right. And and again, you it may be it might be completely. So he was twenty points behind. <laughs> right, right, but no, no, but it might be completely wrong in a primary to yeah. make the analysis that when it comes down to to uh, you know that may because I I could I don't think it's unreasonable to say that somebody says I got to send a message. To the to the uh, uh, Republican Party, I like what the Republicans are doing, yeah. but I got to send a message to them, and I send a message. And Republicans, do, people do that all the time in primaries. They will end up voting sure. for the you know the eventual nominee, but the passion to vote against them in the primary uh, is quite large. So you we may be completely wrong, and Guy Benson might be completely wrong, could be completely right, or it might be somewhere in the middle. We don't know yet because there's so many variables. But you have but a campaign. You, you campaign as if you're 20 points behind. That's yes. it. So that is a concern. If that's my philosophy, our philosophy of how you run a, an election to win, then that is a concern. And I have no idea how the Trump campaign expects to court independence. I don't know. I don't know what their plan is unless they feel that they don't need a plan because independents are so upset already at Joe Biden. Well, if they that, think that, you know, and it could be the case. It could be the case, yes. That, I don't, yeah. You know, that they're already upset with Biden, that the the broken border uh, is, an, is the biggest issue and the economy a close second or vice versa. And if those are the things that, you know, you're going to 
you're going to campaign on, then it applies across the board and you bring independents on that way. But you better know that's the thing is that your internals need to show what the independents are concerned with the most. There's no doubt in my mind that a huge chunk of them are not happy under the current administration. There's no doubt in my mind that the broken border is a driver well, for a great number of them, if not the overwhelming majority of them. And the economy applies to everyone. That's a given. Well, when you look at the fact that so many unaffiliated didn't vote in the Democrat primary, but wanted to send a message in the Republican primary, it shows that they're willing to look at the R's to begin with. Right. Yeah, that's the Republicans. A, that's a, yeah, that's there. a great point. And so you need to, you know, those internals are going to be important. Gauging where they are, again, I think the economy is a given and it applies to everyone. And I think independent, anyone who's looking at this, but if you're weighing it as an independent, you now have a clear comparison. It's not like 2020. What would Biden do if he were the president? That was an abstract question then. And now we know. And we also know what Trump will do as president based on his first term. Let, let me give you just a, a quick analysis uh, as a uh, when I put my political analyst hat on. If the Trump campaign hired me and said, we want you to give us some advice. All right. Number one, uh, it was a couple of rallies ago. I don't remember exactly when here in the last week where he started making fun of Biden and started stuttering. Now, hmm. does that gain you independence in the general election? Or should you say, you know, I was I was listening to the, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, the, you know, my opponent, you know, his cognitive abilities are gone. We think it's we think it's just reprehensible that his family and the Democratic Party won't admit to the fact that he's just too old to do it. We we can talk and we will talk about how his administration and the things that he has done has created the problems that we have. But frankly, we all know. You know, you can talk about age or you can talk about cognitive abilities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He doesn't have it. Is right. that a better way to do that to get independence? I would say yes, instead of being up there flailing your arms and stuttering like Biden did, does. Because, again, it's not about your base anymore. Not about your base. It's about expanding your base at that point. And that has to be done. To but, see, there. I think it's always been about expanding his base even in the primary. He had his base no, to begin no, with. No, that's what, it, that's what I mean. It's, it's not about your base anymore. It, it's about... Getting those independents on board. They have to be on board with it. Yeah. Because then the, the press headlines, Donald Trump making fun of people that stutter. Yeah. Look, Biden, uh, you know, the dis everything that's on display anytime he makes an appearance. It, it At this point, it really, for the most part, goes without saying. You touch on it, and then you just hit the border, the economy, and you hit it over and over and over again. If those are the two main drivers, you're going to have to do that. But you got to get your finger on the pulse of the independent. And if those – look, I'm guessing, and I don't know why the independent would be any different than, than you know, what the polls are showing, you know, across the board. The two major concerns, the border, the economy. And you stay on it. Let's go back to what I was doing. People think that way. Whether he can do that or not isn't even the point. That gets them on board. Because everybody wants to go back to their spending power of 2018-2019. Everyone. I don't know that he can do that. But that's what you do. And you capitalize on that wish that everybody has. 86690 Red Eye. This morning's USDA Farm Report is brought to you by Howes Products. Tested, trusted, guaranteed since 1920.
The nation's cold snap of recent days is about over. All of a sudden, that cold air is utterly disappearing. A few days ago, we started seeing warmer weather overspreading the western U.S., and now that warmer air is making a quick trip across the central and into the eastern United States, helping to flush out any of that remaining bitterly cold air. USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey says the warmer weather also comes with above-normal precipitation in various parts of the country, as well as the increased chance of flooding. Between now and the end of the week, we are expecting two significant storm systems across the south. It could lead to precipitation totals anywhere from two to eight inches or more from eastern Texas to the central and southern Appalachians, also extending as far north as the Ohio Valley. Rippy adds active weather could develop later this week along or near the Gulf Coast. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. This report brought to you by Cenex Fuels and Loops. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carlin. I'm Gary McNamara. You know, the it's interesting because uh, we we had mentioned earlier that Van Jones had said that Biden needs to uh, just do the basement strategy again and put union surrogates out there. Yeah, and we right. just well, what is he talking about? Union leader, the union membership. Number one, what union leaders are you going to put out there? Huh. And what union leaders are going to generally be able to convince Americans that Biden is the guy to vote for? Right. When you think about it, and it was funny because it was Dominic Pino's column, but I saw the resurgence of organized labor is media spin. After a year of wall-to-wall positive coverage for unions, the unionization rate hit a record low in 2023. Mm. It's not growing. And if it is growing, the only place it grows is government, where the original union leadership in this country did not want unions to be in government because government doesn't make profits right now it's like okay if the government has a monopoly let's have a union monopoly (laughs) yeah (laughs) but uh we've heard a lot about you know the union stuff the union stuff and courting the union vote and all that but uh unions you're you're probably talking more and if, if you're in a public union you're voting democrat yeah, you're not going to – that's – honestly, I, I just don't know where they think the appeal would be getting union leaders out there. Who are they going to appeal to? You're singing to the choir. Yeah. But it shows you how lost – because you could see in Van Jones, it was almost like desperation. He can't be out there. He's got to have his surrogates. And it was funny because I had not heard his his those, those comments on the surrogates, and we had already said earlier, and we've said this before. Mm-hmm previous to today, but we said it again today before we played the Van Jones audio, was like, what surrogates? Who out there is selling? Who out there can sell Biden? Well, you hear it in his now, voice, though. It's now, anybody but Biden. Right. Put anybody out there. Put anybody out there but him. Because it's so horrible when he goes out. Now, they can criticize. It's the same criticism about Trump, and it's the same over-the-top Hitler kind of stuff. But I don't believe that's effective anymore. Right. After after you cry wolf a billion times, it's meaningless. But the thing they need to do is boost Joe Biden. Can't do it. Yeah, you can't do it. You it's just impossible. Can't. You can't. It's impossible to boost Joe Biden. Nobody buys it anymore. You're. It's not even, as we said, lies anymore. It rises to the level of gaslighting. Yeah. And that's what we've got in the last couple of weeks, especially with the surrogates out there saying, he is the most aware. He is the smartest person, the most energetic person, mm-hmm. uh, the 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 person with the most inquisitive mind that is in any room that he is in. You yeah. don't see that, <laughs> right? By the way, what makes it gaslighting is you don't see that, right? Well, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? <laughs>
Autonomous Individuals in Unison. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. All right, we had uh, played audio from uh, Trump today, Biden today. Um, uh, oh, what's his name? Dean Phillips, mm-hmm. uh, who came in uh, uh, second place in the uh, uh, Democratic uh, uh, primary. Uh, we haven't played Nikki Haley, though. I'm going to yeah. play just a, a couple of moments of Nikki Haley uh, in her speech last night in New Hampshire. <laughs> For a lot of people, politics is way too personal. It's not personal for me. I voted for Trump twice. I was proud to serve America in his cabinet. I agree with many of his policies. I decided to run because I'm worried about the future of our country and because it's time to put the negativity and chaos behind us. an economy that's crushing middle-class Americans. We have a border that is totally open and dangerous, creating a disaster in our country. Unbelievable! We have, school, we have schools that are failing too many of our children, and we have a world on fire with a war in Europe and the Middle East and a huge and growing threat from China. And then you look at Washington, D.C. We have a Congress that fights about everything and accomplishes nothing. And we have Joe Biden in the White House making one bad decision after another when he's making any decisions at all. Our country's in a real mess. And the question is, who's going to fix it? With Donald Trump, Republicans have lost almost every competitive election. We lost the Senate. We lost the House. We lost the White House. We lost in 2018. We lost in 2020. And we lost in 2022. The worst kept secret in politics is how badly the Democrats want to run against Donald Trump. They know Trump is the only Republican in the country who Joe Biden can defeat. You can't fix, you can't fix the mess if you don't win an election. A Trump nomination is a Biden win and a Kamala Harris presidency. So there you go, part of her uh, speech yesterday, which Mm. is what you would expect. I mean, there aren't really a ton of different policy uh, uh, differences. There are concerns with some of the things that she has said, as we've talked about before, leading with uh, the first thing that turned us off a ways back when she went after DeSantis and said, bring Disney here. And it's like, you don't get it then. Yeah. If you said that, you don't get what's going on. But she gave what you would expect. You would you would uh, her her uh, best defense that yeah, right. she can win and Trump can't. Yeah. Now people can debate it back and forth, but the fact is, you cannot look at the success. We the Republicans should not have lost like they did in twenty twenty two. Right. They should have had much. I'll maybe put it this way: they should they should have had much bigger wins in 2022. Well, they didn't get it. That's what scares me about this year. It is now you look at uh, the the possibility of the House now going back to the Democrats, and the Senate races favor the GOP. But the fact of the matter is, is there has to be a big win 
on the up ballot. If Biden, or if uh, if Trump beats Biden with with a clear margin, then the down ballot is going to be with him. But it's <clears throat> Nikki Haley is not going to perform. Any, there's not going to be any improvement between now and South Carolina. No, no, it's over. There's not going to be any anything that's going to change. Now it's about what the party is going to do and how they're going to campaign between now and November 5th. Okay, you want my conspiracy theory? All right, go for it. No They're la- all shapeshifters. No labels convinces her mm-hmm. to drop out this week, <laughs> and she runs as an independent on the No Labels Party. I made that joke last night. Yeah. On yesterday's show. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's not a joke, it, though. No, they probably already called her. Hey, if you drop out, come over here. Because they, they, look, they, they will look at those polls and... That show, well, look with the poll, whether it's true or not. Because I said, the worst thing you can do is base everything on polls nine months out. Right. But you have nothing else to go on. And so you look and you go, if you're the no labels party and you're looking to get somebody who can draw independence. And you're like, well, nobody likes Joe Manchin. Uh, is, you know, you, you, uh, look at and go, uh, you know, who else is electable that they're looking at? Uh, are they really going to consider Liz Cheney for the no labels party? <laughs> I don't think so. Romney. I'm just, I'm just, and Romney's not going to run. I'm just throwing out, I'm throwing out names that there's, that they believe can get independence. And if you're looking for any type of evidence to justify as no labels, you have to ask yourself, because this is the polling I haven't seen. In a general election, who would you vote for? Biden, Trump, or Nikki Haley leading the no labels party? Which technically would make her an independent. Yes. Here's the question. Is she going to conform to the no labels party based on what they've talked about already? Not believing in anything? Right. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Or the other way around, the party basically coming around and saying, okay, we'll be a moderate Republican party. We already have one of those. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, it's called the Republican Party. <laughs> so, you know, it's it, it's it, that's the problem with when you start out with no labels. No labels. Well, you got to pick a label. No labels. I'm just interested in what the polling would be. Yeah. If you took that poll. Now, I, I wouldn't put a vice president in there. Just put, you know, just put the three because there would be the next thing because the no labels because <laughs> because they're about imagery um it would be like well we would need to have okay Nikki Haley and then we need to find a moderate democrat uh to be the vice president well because so what would it be Nikki a, a Haley mansion no labels party but because, if, well but if, but if you're trying to think cuz they're trying to figure out where to go now with no labels would that if you're talking about strictly and again you're talking about the inaccuracy of polls nine months out and hypothetical polls because she wasn't going to run as a Republican uh, against Biden anyway. That was never going to happen. Mm -hmm. But how close of an election would it be if those three were put and do a number of polls out there, number of polling services to see it? I would love to see it. Now, she could get completely destroyed. I don't know. But that one interests me. Yeah, who would she take from? Yeah. And the question would be, all right, assume she, for the moment, assume for that she takes from Trump. 
But does she? Because if you believe, if you're voting for Trump because there's no way that you would vote for Biden again or you're not going to vote for Biden this time or whatever, you're not going to vote for Biden. You're good. You've absolutely you're going for Trump and she jumps in and then you go, well, maybe her, but she's not going to win. And you know that, which means what? You're taking votes away from Trump, which means Biden's going to win, which gets it back to square one. So if you're on board for Trump, are you willing to be part of that spoiler situation? Well, it would give you an indication whether there really are Democrats and Democrat-leading independents that would really vote for Nikki Haley if you did the, just the polling and on there's it. the other side of it. If she pulled a big number, a, 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 you know, a few points from Biden, I don't think that's going to be the case. I mean, it might be it might be a point or two, but I mean, I don't think she's going to pull. She would pull heavily from Biden. I think if she pulled from either side, it would likely be more Trump. But then again, that ultimate question when it comes to doing the deed. Well, wait a minute. If we all jump on with Nikki, who's not going to win, that means Biden wins. If too many of us do that, Biden wins. And we're well, here. We're we're in Trump's corner right now or were because we don't absolutely don't want Biden for four more years. Well, you can't win with independents alone. Right. Just like just like you can't win with Democrats alone and you can't win with Republicans alone. Right. And and so is even if she pulled 80 percent of of uh, of independents, I was going to go a full hundred percent. You okay, know, but just she, if you went even that, the full hundred, she still doesn't get enough to win. Right. Well, she would have to get a significant number then of Republicans and or Democrats. Yes. I am not convinced at all. I'm convinced that she could get uh fifteen percent of Republicans. I'm not convinced she could get fifteen percent of Democrats. No, I don't think she or twenty percent of Democrats. I don't believe I think that everything on Democrats, I think, you know, we've seen it before. That all these polls showing Republicans can win, Republicans can win, and they haven't been able to win. Right. And the independents have not moved over as far as I would like. This may be the election that they do. I don't know. But I would just like to see the polling. If somebody polls, if Nikki Haley drops out and then somebody says, oh, uh, no labels party. Mm-hmm. Just to, just to see what the polling would be on that. I would that would be interesting to see because mm. it would give you maybe a, a little bit better of idea. Again, it's still, you know, would be eight months, nine months out, but it still would be interesting to see what people would consider, because I don't know where America's at to be. I don't know where the American voters at. I know they're upset well, about and, it, and that, and, I, about things. I don't know what they're upset about if it translates to them making the vote that will get them the president that would get them closer to what they actually want. Right. And how many protest voters are out there? Because I'm not convinced she would win. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carney, and I'm Gary McNamara. We have Nevada coming up, South Carolina coming up, but really in February, not a lot of uh, primaries and or caucuses yeah. uh, coming up. So it's going to be probably a pretty quiet month. Yeah, the rest of it you will know. be. Yeah. So, and um, you know, I don't see. I mean, Nikki Haley is so far behind in South Carolina. What was it? She hasn't reached thirty points yet, right? And she's down by thirty. At right. Least. Yeah. Well, yeah, so. she's and and it's. I don't know. Again, I don't know what changes that. She already should be performing much better in that state. And she's not. So then what changes that? You know, I guess you got to stay in it. It's not the same as being a sitting governor of uh, of Florida like uh, DeSantis. You know, we believed all along that if he's not doing well then 
He's got to get out mm-hmm. uh, long before uh, that stop in in uh, in March in his state where he's the sitting governor. But, but still, you would think her following she should hit. How should how has she not hit thirty before now? And and oh, she's at. Uh, 25 as we speak right. in, in South Carolina. You know, on the no labels thing, if she drops out like in the next week or so and uh, the no labels party comes after her, to me that would make sense for the no labels party. doesn't matter if she wins. Mm-hmm. It's that Trump is defeated for the no labels party. Yeah. Because I don't believe they're the ones that they're not. If if Trump was, if it was Nikki Haley against Biden, no labels would disappear. They right. claim that they're against unqualified candidates. They're not. Right. They're against Trump. Yeah. That's what it comes down yeah. to. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.